Okay, today we're looking at section 6.61, part 1. And <clears throat> we're going to be solving a log, uh, sorry, exponential equations. We also want to be able to solve log equations. And we're also going to be looking at exponential logarithmic inequalities in part 2. So for today, we're going to be solving the exponentials first. So that's part 1 of this. If we have an exponential expression on both sides, and if we can get like bases, do so. Because then all we have to do is set the exponential part uh, equal to one another. If there is only one exponential expression in the equation, you may need to solve by rewriting the equation in logarithmic form, or we can take the log of both sides. So. <clears throat> Look at this example. If we have 3 to the x equals 3 to the fifth, it's obvious that x is 5. So that's the kind of thing we'd like to have, is we want to have those like bases. In this case, we have an exponential equation with like bases, so all we have to do is set those exponents equal to one another. And so solving this, we're going to get 3x equals 12, and so x is going to be 4. And that's going to be our solution. Now on this one, we don't have like bases to start with, so I'm going to have to get like bases. To get like bases, 4 is going to be 2 squared, and then we still have the 2x minus 1. 8 is going to be 2 cubed, and we still have the x plus 2. We have to have these like bases in order to set the exponential part equal to one another. So while I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and distribute. I've got 4x minus 2 equals 3x plus 6. Subtract the 3x and you get x, add the 2 and you get 8, and that's going to be our solution. Okay, number 3. It's impossible for us to get like bases, so on a problem like this, I have to rewrite it in logarithmic form. That's one way to do the problem. So I want to show you that. I would have to do log base 3 of 5 equals x plus 3. Remember how we learned this. If we have a to the b equals c, that's the same as log base a of c equals b. That's all I'm doing right there. And now to solve the problem, I just have to subtract 3. So the answer is going to be log base 3 of 5 minus 3 equals x. That's going to be the exact answer. <clears throat> so if I want a decimal approximation, I can go to my calculator, I can go to math, I can go to log base, I put in log base 3 of 5 minus 3. And so our approximate answer will round to the nearest hundredth is negative 1.54. Now you're going to have to read the directions on big ideas and on the assessments that you're given. If it asks for an exact answer, that's the exact answer. If it asks for an approximate answer, this would be the approximate answer. If I want to check this answer, anytime I have an equation, I can put the left part of the equation in for y sub 1, put the right side into y sub 2, I can graph it. There's the exponential. There's the y equals 5 coming up here in a second. And I want to find out what is the x value that makes them equal. So second trace, calculate, intersect. I'm going to get closer and closer to that point. I'm looking here. Actually, I'm going in the wrong direction. I'm going to go to the left. There we go. Enter, enter, enter. And then there's my solution, negative 1.54. Now, the thing with the calculator is it can't give me the exact solution. It can only give me this decimal approximation. So if you're asked for the exact answer, you would have to do the problem algebraically. Let me show you how to do the same problem, but now I'm going to do it by taking the log of both sides. So if I take the log of both sides, I have log 3 of x, uh, sorry, I have log 3 of to the x plus 3, and I have log 5. I'm just taking the log of both sides. I can make the base anything. I'm making it 10. We learned the property that when we have an exponent on a log, that can become a coefficient. And so I'm trying to solve for x. I'm going to have to divide by log 3. And so I get x plus 3 equals log 5 over log 
3 and then subtract 3. So we get x equals log 5 over log 3 minus 3. That's the exact answer. Now you should notice that all this is is that change of base formula that we learned. Log base 3 of 5 is the same thing as log 5 over log 3. Remember change of base that we learned right here? That if I have log base C of A, I can make that base anything, and it's log A over log C. So these are exactly the same exact answers. So you could give me either one of those. And you need to understand that those are congruent. Those are equal to each other. All right, let's look at number four. On this one, when I look at this, I can see that I can get like bases. There is no sense doing logarithms if I can get like bases. So I'm going to rewrite this as 5 to the negative 1. That's another name for 1 fifth. The other side is 5 to the x. So now I'm going to set my exponents equal, distributing as I go. So solving this, I'm going to add 3x. That's 4x equals 2. And so x is going to equal 1 half. All right, on this one, before I can do anything else, I have to isolate this exponential. So I'm going to have to add 14 to both sides. So I want to isolate that exponential, so I want to divide by 3 as well. All right, so now I want to think, what do I want to do? Well, I have an exponential just like this one. And I can take the log of both sides if I want. I'm going to show you that way first this time. So I can do log of e to the x equals log of 25 thirds. Whenever I have a log and I have an exponent, I can bring this down in front. Now, I took the log of both sides, but what else could we have done? Instead of making this log base 10, what other base could I have used? I can use any base, can I? So it would have made it, the problem easier if I just would have used the natural log. So on a problem like this, when you see an E, see right here, I can finish this problem. It can be log base 10 of 25 thirds divided by log base 10 of E. Watch what I get on that. I, I want you to really understand this. It's a very interesting concept. So I've got log of 25 thirds divided by log of E. Uh, there's E right there above the division. Okay, here's what I get for my answer, right? That's my approximate answer. And I could write this as an exact answer, but it's kind of messy, isn't it? So let's go back here again. Instead of taking the log base 10 of both sides, what about if I take the log base e, since the base is e? Well, if I take the log base e, that's just natural log. Watch what happens when I do it this way. So now when I have an exponent, it becomes a coefficient. And what's the answer to natural log of e? You guys should know that. If you don't, because here's what it means. It means e to the what is e. Was an e to the to the first e? So this is just one right here. So then my answer can just be written as natural log of 25 thirds. Isn't that a better answer than this one? Right? Here's the other answer I got, but this one is better. And it's equivalent. Watch when I just put in natural log of 25 thirds. See how I get exactly the same answer? All right, so that's what I want you to see, is that any time I have an e as the base, take the natural log of both sides instead of taking the log base 10. Even though this answer is right, this answer is much nicer. And then the other thing I could have done, the other way I could have done this problem, when I had e to the x equals 25 thirds, is I could just change this into a logarithm. So watch how I do that. It would be log base e of 25 thirds equals x. Well, what's another name for log base e? Natural log. So natural log of 25 thirds equals x. See, that was even easier still. But I just want you to see all these different ways. All right. Over here now. So this is the second part of 
the first part. <laughs> so this is how to solve logarithmic equations. So if you have a log on both sides of the equation with like bases, simply solve. If there's a log on only one side, we have to solve by converting into an exponential equation or we can exponentiate each side. If there is more than one log on a side, we must condense to a single log. So we have to have a single log before we can do anything else. Then convert into an exponential equation and solve. So look at this. If b, x, and y are positive real numbers with b not equal to 1, then log base b of x equals log base b and y of y, if and only if x equals y. Okay? Here's another thing we have to remember. If we have log base b of b to the x, that's just x. If we have b to the log base b of x, that's also just x. That was on our last quiz. All right, look at the first problem, starting off easy. Natural log of something equals natural log of something. Therefore, x and y must be equal. Now, I got two solutions. We might get some extraneous solutions, especially on the log problems. So what I'm going to do to solve this is I'm going to put in natural log of x squared plus 3. And I'm going to put in natural log of 4. I'm going to graph it. So one way to check is with our graphing calculator. Are negative 1 and positive 1 both solutions? Yes, they are. Okay, that's one way to check. If this had been on the non-graphing part, non-graphing calculator part of the quiz, I could plug in 1. 1 squared is 1 plus 3 is 4. Negative 1 squared is 1 plus 3 is 4. Okay, so I can check it that way as well. All right, number 7. This one, pretty easy problem. I have just a log here and I have a number here. Well, I know that if I have log base A of B equals C, that can be written as A to the C, not 3, C. A to the C equals B, right? Log base A of, B of C is A to the C equals B. So back here, here's my A, here's my B, here's my C. So it's going to be A to the C equals B. <clears throat> and now solving that, 3 squared is 9. And so I'm going to get 9 fourths. Okay? Plug it in, see if it works. 4 times 9 fourths is 9. 3 to the second is 9, so that works. All right, this one's going to be the same way. We have a log, and then we have a constant over here. So we're just going to rewrite this in exponential form. So it's 8 to the 2 thirds equals x squared minus 5. What's 8 to the 2 thirds? Well, cube root of 8 is 2, squared is 4. I'm going to add 5 and take the square root. So I get plus or minus 3. Let's see if that would work. What about the negative? That's the one you should worry about. Negative 3 squared is 9. 9 minus 5 is 4. 8 to the 2 thirds. Well, the cube root of 8 is 2 squared is 4. Yeah, they are both going to work there. All right, on this one, here's the situation that I was talking about. We must have a single log on each side. We have two logs, so I have to condense it. When I have addition and I have two logs, it has to become multiplication. So now, because I've got the natural log on both sides, I just set those equal. So x squared plus 2x has to equal x plus 6. Set, get, this is a quadratic. I'm going to have to get it set equal to 0. So x squared plus x minus 6 is going to have to be 0. We have x and x, 3 and 2, plus and minus. So x is going to have to be negative 3 and 2. If you look back here, though, <clears throat> if I have the natural log of x, this is impossible to have it as a negative number. That's because the base is e. e to any power is going to have to be something greater than 0. All right? So my domain back here, and I look at the most restrictive one, too. See, for this one, x has to be greater than 0. For this one, x has to be greater than negative 2. For this one, x has to be greater than negative 6. 
but which one is the most restrictive, meaning that it uses the fewest values? Well, that would be x greater than 0. So that's what I'm going to use as what I'm thinking about for my solutions. The x value I come up with has to be greater than 0. And so therefore, my only answer is probably going to be 2. Now, if this is on graphing calculator part, <clears throat> I can check it this way. I'm going to go back to my original problem, natural log of x plus natural log of x plus 2 and then natural log of x plus 6. Here's the way it looks. And we can see that they're meeting right there. That's the only place they're meeting. So second trace, calculate that point of intersection, get close to it, enter, enter, enter. Oops. And the solution is 2, so only 2. I can see down here at negative 3, the blue function doesn't even exist. And that's because of this domain restriction. All right. On this one, <clears throat> I'm going to have to get it down to a single log. So I'm going to have log base 2 of x plus 5, subtraction turns into division, equals 3. So what I can do now is I can rewrite this as an exponent problem. So I find the base, I use my exponent. So now I have 8 equals x plus 5 over x minus 2. That's going to be 8x minus 16 equals x plus 5. Notice how I distributed that 8 through both of those terms. So then I'm going to get 7x equals 21, and so x is going to be 3. I should check my domain. This one, x has to be greater than negative 5. This one, x has to be greater than 2. Well, 3 works for both of those, so it should be a solution. All right. Now, the other way to do this, let me go from this point right here. When I get it down to this step, Here's another way to do the problem. When I get it down to here, <clears throat> I can now exponentiate it. I find the base that I have here of 2. And I can write this problem as 2 to the log base 2 of x plus 5 over x minus 2. And I can rewrite this. I have to use the same base as 2 to the third. Well, when I have 2 log base 2, we talked about how those 2's basically are going to cancel out. So now all we're left with is x plus 5 over x minus 2. But over here, we just have 2 to the third, and 2 to the third is 8. And now we're to where we were back here. We just cross multiply and solve. So I show you this way just so you understand this exponentiate concept. And again, you find the base, whatever that base is, that's what you're going to use to solve it on both sides. <clears throat> and this is the way we're going to have to do inequalities to make it work out right. So let me just do a really simple problem and show you that exponentiate method just right over here. We'll just I've got a little space here. So if I have a problem like log base 3, I'm going to do a very simple problem of 7 equals x. That's really already solved. I mean, I could just put that into my calculator and evaluate it. But I want you to understand that this could also be done like this. It could be done as 3 to the log base 3 of 7 equal. Well, that's not going to help on this one. Um, never mind, because that's already solved. Let me see here. What do, what do I want to do? Um, I would need to have the x over here. Let me start over here. Log base 3 of x equals 7. This way, this would be the kind of problem we need. All right, so we all know we can just do 3 to the 7th equals x, and that's the easiest way. But I could also do 3 to the log base 3 of x equals 3 to the 7th, right? And so now these 3's cancel out, and I just get x equals 3 to the 7th, and that's the answer. Wasn't that the answer we would have gotten this way, 3 to the 7th equals x? 
That's what I mean by exponentiating both sides. Ignore that. All right. <clears throat> Let's look at a word problem. Your parents buy juice for your graduation party and leave it in their hot car. When they take the cans out of the car and move them to the basement, the temperature of the juice is 80 degrees Fahrenheit. The room temperature of the basement is 60 degrees Fahrenheit, and the cooling rate of the juice is R equals 0.0147. Using Newton's law of cooling, which is T equals T sub O minus T sub R e to the negative RT plus T sub R, how long will it take to cool the juice to 63 degrees? All right, well, think about this formula. This T right here is going to be the end temperature. This is the original temperature. This is the room temperature. R is the cooling rate. T is the time. And here's the temperature of the room again. It's just common sense here with these formulas. It's just like our interest formula we did. So we want to know how long, meaning what time, is it going to take to get that temperature of the juice to go down to 63 degrees? All right, so we want it to be 63 degrees. Its original temperature is 80 degrees of the juice minus the temperature of the room. Where's the room? 60 for the room. E to the negative. Here's the rate, the cooling rate, 0 .01, 0 .0, 0 0.0147. T, we don't know, plus T sub R is the temperature of the room. All right, so here's the problem we want to solve. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract 60. I get 3. 80 minus 60, that's going to be 20. So I took care of that. I've got 20E to the negative 0.0147T. Now, before we learn these new methods, we would have to put this into the calculator to solve it. But let's do it without. I can divide by 20. And I get 3 over 20 equals e to the negative 0.0147t. If I want to solve for this exponent, what I can do is I can just take the natural log of both sides. So I'm going to have the natural log of 3 over 20 equals the natural log of e to the negative 0.0147t. The reason I took the natural log is because my base is e. So if I can make my base be the same, I want to do that because I know this will just end up being 1. Anytime I have an exponent, it becomes a coefficient. What did I just say the natural log of E is? It's 1, isn't it? And so then my T is going to be the natural log of 3 over 20 divided by negative 0.0147. That's the exact answer for the time. Now, that doesn't make a lot of sense, though, in this situation, does it? We want to know how many hours is it going to take. We need that juice. We need it to be cool. All right, so let's see what's going to happen. So we got the natural log of 3 divided by 20 divided by negative 0.0147. And we've got 129. Ooh. So it's going to take us about 129.1 hours. Is this in hours? Let's see. Some temperature. Yeah, I think it is in hours. So it's going to take us this many hours for it to cool. Well, so we would then want to divide that out by 24. We can see how many days. So it's going to take about five days, about 5.4 days for it to cool down to what we needed to. Or maybe this is in minutes, actually. Parents, what do you guys think? Minutes or hours? Well, I'm going to have to refer to our book to see. That is a big difference depending on which one it is. I wouldn't think it would, maybe it would only take two hours. I don't know. Let's look it up. So here's a handy dandy way to find things in your book. Newton's Law of Cooling in the glossary, but, or not the glossary, but the index back here. 335 is the page we're going to look at. All we need to know 
is whether this is in, the time is in, uh, it's minutes. Okay, here's another example. And here it is right up here, temperature after T minutes. Okay, so make a note on that, on your notes, that this formula is in minutes. Okay, much better for cooling down our juice, knowing that this is in minutes instead of hours. So 129.1 divided by 60 minutes means that it's going to take about 2.15 hours. And that's a lot better than the other situation we talked about. All right, but the big thing with this is this is your end temperature. This is the original. This is the room. This is the rate of cooling. This is the time. And this is, again, temperature of the room. All right?